Hey everyone, welcome to CGSP Reports. I am Jenga Hakina, CGSP's Africa Climate Editor here in Nairobi, Kenya. Listen, all of us use Chinese technology every day. It's everywhere. Our phones, our computers, all those solar panels popping up around town. And now, more and more, the cars and buses on the roads here in Kenya and in other parts of Africa. Here is Nairobi. There are a few Chinese EVs on the road, but not that many, especially compared to other places where they're really starting to take off. First of all, they are more expensive and we just don't have the charging network and running yet for EVs to work. But what you will see on the roads here are electric buses, lots and lots of e-buses. Not surprisingly, the tech powering these buses comes from China. And so I wanted to learn how it actually works and what the business model looks like. Several e-bus companies are now operating in Kenya, and I am thrilled to be joined by a representative from one of them. Samuel Kamunya is the head of business development at Basigo, and Basigo has a number of buses on the road, which are all using technology from EV giant BYD. And to give us a glimpse behind the scenes of Basigo, very quickly, um, Basigo is pretty well known here in Kenya, but it is still new to many people. And BYD is very well known in the EV space. Uh, they are now the largest EV manufacturer in the world, and they've been doing buses for a very long time. But they are not the only ones uh, who are doing this. For Basigo, what were the factors you considered to go with BYD technology over those from other you know, countries and also other providers? Um, is there any other tech uh, provider that you source from China? So when you look at um, when we launched uh, Basigo and the first uh, two pilot buses we brought into the country, uh, enough, we have done a lot of research, we had done a lot of groundwork, and um, we zeroed in at BYD, being the largest bus manufacturer in the world. It's only uh, strategic enough to bring a product that has been tried and tested over the time and has been ranked as the best in the world. Then over time, as you move, as we get to learn the electric uh, bus uh, industry, the electric bus mechanisms, we have now expanded our range. So from now, we have a variety of several uh, manufacturers in our fleet. And we have uh, a variety of BYD. We have what we call BLK. We have what we call Zongtong. We have what we call Haiga. And uh, we're looking to add more just to make sure that the journey to a thousand buses in Kenya, the journey to uh, having buses across the major cities in Africa is not slowed down just because we are engaged with one customer, but a pool of all these competent uh, manufacturers, OEMs, that we are able to get quality for the market and uh, be able to avail this thing to be as accessible as possible. So it's interesting that the tech that is helping us transition in Africa is, uh, especially for Basigo and in Kenya, uh, is largely Chinese because of Yutong, you know, BYD, then there is uh, CH, CATL and all those. But um, I would want to understand how the relationship works. Uh, do you just buy the kits from them and then you're on your own? Or do they provide after-sales services uh, once you have acquired these kits from them? Uh, so it's um, <clears throat> it's a it's a fact. It's um, an economic fact. It's a trade fact that uh, China is leading in uh, these electric bus uh, manufacturing. China is leading. So when you look at what China has done over the years, it would only make uh, it would only make a business uh, sense to leverage on that um, uh, on those trades they have made over the years and to try and bring them to Africa. So when we engage ourselves with our OEMs, uh, the BYDs, the CHTCs, the Yutongs, um, uh, the Hygars, it only when you, it's a fact that China is um, an economic giant, a manufacturing giant. When you talk in terms of EV, and for Africa especially, it makes a lot of trade sense, a lot of business sense to leverage on the um, uh, the Asian giant to be able to get your products from there, 
because uh, the lead times are shorter, the travel times from China to Africa is shorter, and um, the local support that they give also makes sense for us. So for us, what we do is that we have we have uh, several kinds of relationship with the, relationships with these operators. So we have a relationship where they sell us the fully built units, uh, give us uh, what we call um, ground support when we are piloting and testing these buses, a lot of skill transfer. We have the engineers coming locally, train our engineers, and then we always have an open um, door with them where we can always refer to them any technical uh, hitches, any mechanical problems that are beyond uh, us in Kenya. At the same time, what we have is we're doing local assembly for some of these units, like the units we are doing local assembly, the CBLK CHTC units. So what we do in our first build, in our initial build, we have the Chinese engineers, the Chinese technicians with us on the ground, helping us build these units. And our engineers are working closely with them. And it's only a matter of time before we become um, confident enough to be able to say that now we can be able to only leverage on minimal uh, support from them. But we get a lot of technical support, a lot of um, uh, skills have been based locally uh, from China and Kenya to be able to help us. And at the same time, the working relationship, uh, you see, for these buses to make sense, they must be always on the road. So the working relationship is just to ensure that these buses are always running and are reliable in the roads of Kenya. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for that. And when you say uh, ground support and you have clarified that, um, the fact that they send their engineers to you means that you have all the assistance that you need when it comes to dealing with this technology. Now, um, there is a question that is very pertinent. And could Basigo have launched without BYD and access to Chinese technology? And would the business and the model still have worked if this wasn't the case? BYD is a strong brand, is um, a renowned brand, has been there for long. Mm -hmm. And having to learn from the best, it's okay. We, we, we would have strategically maybe positioned ourselves to start with um, any other brand. Uh, however, when you look at uh, the decision to start with BYD, the strategic decisions, Mm. Uh, that now eventually also gives other OEMs confidence that Kenyan is a good market. And even mm. them now, they came and join us. So mm. I think th they benefit from that fact. That they are a big brand. They are a big uh, manufacturing house. They are a big uh, trading company. So with that and the confidence of their products in Kenya, I think it gives confidence to all other companies that Kenyan mm. is a good market and Basigo is not an exemption to work with all these partners. China has enormous advantages producing EV technology, uh, yeah. like what Basigo is using, and it's just a big head start over everyone else. Do you and your colleagues at Basigo envision a day where uh, a country like us in Kenya could manufacture some of what you're currently buying from China? Um, when you look at where we are currently, uh, and not only in Basigo, when you look at the EV space, uh, most of the raw materials come from China. But what has happened in the last few years, the last two, three years, most of the companies that are doing EVs in the country, especially the two-wheelers, the three-wheelers, and the electric buses, are doing um, local assembly. And one of the things about local assembly is that with every build, you seek room to improve and to add local content into the bus. Uh, so maybe when we start, we are at 100% imported uh, kits. When we move on, we seek to assimilate things that can be done locally as much as possible. When you look at the windows, they can be done locally. When you look at all the seats that now we are doing with local assembly, we are doing them locally. When you look at some of them, still we can be able to find locally, but it will take time for us to do that. And when you look at other EV companies, some of them have gotten to a proportion where they're already over 30% of local inputs into local assembly. And basically that is where we look for, because our vision is to make this technology accessible by making it affordable and making it able, reachable to 
any person that will be interested in this technology. And one of the ways to do that is to input as much local content as possible. So it will make sense to get a window, a glass pane from a local supplier has opted to importing that glass window. So with time, what we are seeing is there are some things that cannot be found locally, but by the time we get there, whatever it is that can be found locally, we'll try as much as possible to do that. We know that, they, we know that Africa in general has a lot of um, what we call uh, manufacturers of uh, raw materials of batteries and everything. And those Chinese companies are coming to set up in Africa. So that is what we're trying to do as our best. We're trying to assimilate as much, and we are looking, we are closely watching and seeing what can be gotten from Africa, what can be gotten for Kenya to be considered local assembly. From where you are at, um, and with the demand like for the buses in Rwanda, um, in terms of acquisition, like I am coming to buy or I need a bus, um, what are the trends that you are seeing? Is is there demand uh, growth, uh, or where where is it at? So, as a company, what we do is that we try and project uh, as what will our numbers look like, uh, availability of the numbers, uh, year in year out. At what stage you'll have how many buses? At what stage you'll have how many buses? And then we match that, but go, by going back to the market and asking the market, uh, we are asking you to uh, have an early opportunity to reserve yourself a bus, uh, so that by, by the time your bus is being manufactured, you're aware, by the time it's being delivered, you're prepared, not coming to you then and telling you this is what is going to happen. So when you look at those um, uh, more, uh, um, strategies we adapt, and you look at what has happened to us the last uh, year. We announced that we're doing local assembly and we announced that by 2026, we want to get ourselves to 1,000 buses. And by the air close of last year, that is uh, by the close of 2023, we had ourselves 450 uh, committed customers with the deposits to the company. And when you look at that, that gives us confidence that what you're trying, that what you're doing is uh, good, that what you're doing is strategic, what you're doing is sustainable, what you're doing is something that the market is attracted to. So we have customers lined up for us at least until next year, 2025, because they have 450 customers, paid deposits, and we are manufacturing buses as we tell them. So by telling the customer you already paid a bus, your bus is in the assembly line now. Prepare yourself, your bus is going to. So given, given that kind of uh, uh, strides we have taken, it gives us confidence that our business will be here to last and that the market is confident with what we are doing and they are seeing what we are doing and they are confident with it. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it sounds like it's a business I would want to be in. It, the demand is that much. Thank you so much, Samuel, for your time today. I really do appreciate it and wish you guys all the best. Uh, Samuel Kamunya is the head of business development at the e-bus company Basigo here in Kenya. And thank you for watching another edition of CGSP Reports. Be sure to join the discussion below. And of course, please subscribe, like, and make sure you get all of the great programming that CGSP is now producing for this channel. I'll see you next time. My name is Njenga Hakina.